Find the partial fraction's decomposition for 2x plus 1 over 15x squared plus 8x plus 1. Let's start off by taking the denominator, 15x squared plus 8x plus 1, and factoring it. It should factor into two monomials. The last two terms should multiply to give me 1, so 1 and 1, and the first two terms should become 15x squared, so 5x and 3x are good candidates. And you can check that this actually does the right factorization. So now that we have the function factored, we know that 2x plus 1 over 15x squared plus 8x plus 1 should be decomposed into two terms, a term over 5x plus 1 and a term over 3x plus 1. All we need to do is work out the two unknown numerators. To get closer to that, let's take our decomposed side and put it back together again on its common denominator of 5x plus 1 and 3x plus 1. Notice that the first term needs a 3x plus 1 top and bottom to be on the common denominator. So it's going to contribute an a times 5, 3x plus 1. Sorry. Next, the second term requires a 5x plus 1 top and bottom to be returned to the common denominator. So it's going to contribute a b times a 5x plus 1. And since these two terms now have the same denominator, we can add up their numerators and set it equal to the original 2x plus 1 over 15x squared plus 8x plus 1. Since we have two fractions who are equal with the same denominators, we only need to set the two numerators equal and focus on that equation. So let's focus on this right now. All we need to do is come up with any two values, say x equals 0 and x equals 1. And this equation will turn into a system of two equations and two unknowns. That x equals 0 becomes 1, plus, or 1 equals a plus b. And if we plug in x equals 1, we have 3 is equal to a times 4 plus b times 6 or the equation 4a plus 6b equals 3. This is two equations and two unknowns, and so we can solve this using any of the techniques we've got. For example, row operations. We make the augmented matrix here, and we can start row reducing it. If we scale the top row 1, 1, 1 through by negative 4 and add it to the bottom, we get 0, 2, minus 1. If we then scale the top row through by 2, we would obtain 2, 2, 2, and a bottom row of 0, 2, minus 1. And then we can subtract the bottom row from the top row to obtain 2, 0, 3, 0, 2, minus 1. This is in row echelon form. If we scale everything through by a 1 half, we have 1, 0, 3 halves, 0, 1, minus 1 half. And so that corresponds to the equations a equals 3 halves and b equals minus 1 half. Of course, that's not the answer we need to take these numbers and plug them back into the original partial fractions decomposition. So we'll replace a by 3 halves, we'll replace b by minus 1 half, and this becomes our partial fractions decomposition. We can also write this as 3 halves times 1 over 5x plus 1 minus 1 half times 1 over 3x plus 1. Either one of these is appropriate, although the latter version is actually kind of helpful for calculus. Now, we just picked two random values, 0 and 1. They were the easiest ones to work with as my x values. But we could go back and try a different set of values designed to make things disappear. For example, if we set x equal to 1 fifth, then we're going to get on the left-hand side negative 2 fifths plus 1. We'll have a times negative 3 fifths plus 1. But the b term will cancel. That means we have 3 fifths is equal to 2 fifths times a. And if we solve this equation for a, we find that a is equal to 3 halves, just like we had before. So we can replace that, and it's the exact same formula. Similarly, if we tried letting x be negative 1 third, we're going to have minus 2 thirds plus 1 is equal to, now the first term cancels, the a term is gone, and we're left with b times negative 5 thirds plus 1. And so we can, again, solve this equation for b. We'd have 1 third is equal to minus 2 thirds b. And so that's going to solve and get us b is equal to minus 1 half. If we plug this into the top, we have the exact same partial fractions decomposition we had once before. And so that's our solution.